If you're just starting out with the OTS exam, uh, just getting ready to begin your preparation, you're in the right place because I'm going to share with you the first steps that you need to take uh, to know everything you need to know about what it will take to be successful on the IELTS exam. So let's get started and uh, talk about something that's very important right from the beginning. The IELTS exam is a test of your English language proficiency. But on the other hand, it's also a test of your IELTS skills. So you are preparing to do two things, to show your level of English and to improve your skills and strategies and techniques for every question type on the IELTS exam. But I wanna say this right from the beginning. If you don't feel that your English language is at that high enough level, which is a high intermediate to an advanced level of English, don't start focusing on IELTS until you've taken your English level to where it needs to be to be successful on the IELTS exam. There's no replacing the fact that this is a test of your ability in the English language. Once you know that you have reached that level of English that you need to be, to be at, then you can start focusing on the IELTS skills and strategies and techniques that you need. I will say that just focusing on IELTS skills and strategies will not actually do a lot to improve your English. So make sure your English is at the level where you feel it needs to be. You can do both at the same time. But when you're focusing on IELTS skills, focus on IELTS. When you're focusing on improving your English, focus on improving your English. And I recommend focusing on your English first, getting it to the level where it needs to be, and then begin your IELTS preparation. But let's talk about IELTS. You're ready to go. Your English is at that high enough level. What do you need to know about the IELTS exam? First of all, there are four components to the IELTS exam. There's the listening, reading, writing, and speaking sections. In the listening section, which is the first you'll do on test day, you'll have 30 minutes to listen to 40 questions, and it's divided into four sections. In section one, you'll listen to two people making some kind of arrangements. In section two, you'll have an information session, which is a monologue with one person speaking. In section three, you could have two or three people working on a project together, and then section four is kind of a uh, an academic style lecture where you'll have to answer questions. You only hear the recording once and you answer the questions as you go. In the reading section, you have 60 minutes to answer 40 questions and it's divided into three sections, each with its own text and 13 or 14 questions where you'll have to find the information from the text to answer the questions. Then in the writing section, you have 60 minutes and you have two tasks to complete. So uh, you'll have to do one essay of 250 words, which you'll spend 40 minutes doing, and one essay or letter uh, in, section, in part one, where you'll have to uh, write 150 words and you'll have 20 minutes to do that. And then in the speaking section, you'll meet face to face with an examiner and you'll have three sections. The first where you're asked some short questions and personal questions about something to do with your lifestyle. In part two, you'll be asked to give a two minute talk. And in part three, you'll be asked to share um, your opinion about more hypothetical and general situations. So the listening section and the speaking section are the same, whether you're taking general or academic. The reading section, the IELTS, the question types are the same in general uh, and academic, but there are some differences in the, the challenge you'll face in the type of text. And in the writing section, 
Uh, part two is the same. The 250 word opinion essay is the same, but for uh, general, uh, the writing task is a letter and in uh, the academic, it's a comparative essay describing a chart, a diagram or a table. When it comes to the writing and speaking sections, there are four criteria, four measurements of your English language ability, and four things that you'll have to accomplish when completing these tasks. So you'll need to be aware that the first is task achievement. You need to deal with the topic and the question that you're given. So you can't prepare for topics or memorize templates or, or memorize uh, essays ahead of time, you have to be able to deal with the topic that you're given in that moment. And that's so important to, to recognize. The second part of the writing task is coherence and cohesion, which is really how you structure your essay and how you deal with sharing your opinion in a logical way so that your essay has a good flow to it and goes from one point to the next in a consistent and coherent fashion. And then lexical resource, which is a test of your vocabulary, and grammatical range and accuracy, which is how well uh, you use grammar with as few errors as possible. In speaking, you'll be tested on your fluency, your ability to speak naturally, and without interruption, lexical resource, which is your vocabulary, and then grammatical range and accuracy again, which is speaking with as few grammar mistakes as possible. And then pronunciation. And pronunciation, pronunciation means speaking clearly. It's not to, anything to do with your accent. You can have, you are going to have an accent if you come from a non-speaking uh, English speaking country. So it's okay to have an accent as long as your uh, pronunciation doesn't stop you from speaking and communicating clearly. In the listening and reading section, your goal is to answer as many correct questions as possible out of 40. And that's the only criteria you have to meet is getting the answers correct as quickly and efficiently and effectively as possible. If you want more information about the specific details of these criteria, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll find videos about everything you need to know about the writing section or speaking section for both general and academic, and you'll find videos for every section and question type on the IELTS exam. So I would encourage you to subscribe and find everything you need as you begin your preparation. One of the most important things that you can do right at the outset as you begin to prepare, before you even start preparing, is to know the score that you're going to need for whatever the purpose is you're taking the test. If you're taking the test for university, there's a good chance that you're going to need a, a minimum of a 6.5 uh, overall band score with a minimum of 6 or 6.5 in each section. And it's important to know this ahead of time. So before you begin your outs preparation, uh, research the university in the country that you plan to go to and find out what you need. A good general rule of thumb is that you're going to need a seven when you're preparing and practicing. If you can get a seven in every section, you probably know you're ready, uh, regardless of where you're going. Uh, for a graduate program, you may need a seven or 7.5. Uh, there are some training programs in English speaking countries where you may only need a 5.5 or a six. If you're changing your profession or are going to take up your profession in a new English speaking country, uh, the organization or company that you're going to work for will have some specific requirements. You need to know 
uh, these requirements. If, it, if it's for immigration or permanent resident status, what's important to know is that uh, you will have a minimum score that you will need to get. It could be as low as a 5 or a 5.5. But one thing to understand, and this is unique to immigration and permanent residence, you get more points towards your, your permanent residence score and, the, and your application uh, if your score on IELTS is higher. So uh, that's not necessarily true, for example, if you're going to university. If a university requires a 6.5, that's the minimum standard, but you don't get really any extra benefit from getting higher than that. But when it comes to immigration and PR, the amount of points towards your application does improve with a higher band score. But the minimum requirement for immigration and permanent residence is probably a little lower than for university, a training program, or going into a professional uh, organization. So, but the most important thing is know the score you need uh, right at the beginning of your preparation so you can set your goal and you can know uh, what you're working towards and that'll help to keep you motivated and disciplined as you prepare. The second thing to realize, and we just talked about the different purposes for the IELTS exam, is to know what test that you need to take. For immigration and permanent residence, uh, it's probably the general IELTS exam. For university training programs or uh, a professional organization, it's going to be the academic IELTS. There is a few differences, like I, I already mentioned in uh, just a few minutes ago, but when it comes to general or academic, there are some things that are similar. The listening test is exactly the same. The speaking section is exactly the same in both general and academic. Writing task two, the 250 word essay, is the same for both general or academic. In listening and reading, uh, uh, in sorry, in reading, because uh, there are some differences in the reading section, but it's not in the question types. Okay, The question types for general and academic in the reading section, the strategies and techniques for these question types are exactly the same. And you can find uh, a playlist I have on my YouTube channel that has, uh, there's a playlist for every different reading question type and every different listening question type. So be sure to check those out if you want more information and you, if you're beginning your preparation for the listening or reading section. So these, this is what's similar between the general and the academic. What's different is the text themselves in the reading section. The questions are the same, but in the academic test, the, the reading texts are a little more challenging. It's usually an academic kind of topic in the general, you may have different types of things that you need to read. It could be advertisements and brochures. It could even be directions or instructions to complete a task, but uh, the texts are different in general or academic. General is more everyday kinds of tasks than the academic. In writing task one, there's a difference between general and academic. In the general uh, IELTS exam for writing task one, you'll be writing a 150 word letter, either formal or informal. And for writing task one in the academic exam, you'll be writing a summary and comparison of uh, a flow chart, a diagram, a graph, or a table. But again, right from the outset, make sure you know which test you have to take and what's accepted for the purpose for which you're taking the IELTS exam. Another thing that you can take into consideration, and you can do both general and academic, either on paper or computer. 
And how to choose between paper and computer depends on what you feel most comfortable with and what's best for you. There are some advantages to the paper-based test, and there are some advantages to the computer-based test. If you want to discover more information about the differences, I have a video on my YouTube channel that you can check out to, to choose, help you choose between whether to use paper or computer. Whether you do use paper or computer, one thing is the same, and it's true for all IELTS exams, and that is you have to go to the test center to complete your test. So if you're doing it on paper or computer, you still have to go to the test center to do your exam. So let's talk a bit about resources. What are the best resources that you can start with as you begin your preparation? And the top uh, resource that I recommend that you can't go wrong with is Cambridge IELTS. Cambridge is the organization that has designed the IELTS exam. They've created the IELTS exam. They've also uh, produced some books to help you in your preparation. And these are the Cambridge IELTS exam books. And there are 17 different books. And all of them contain uh, actual questions that have been used on previous IELTS exams. I recommend that you only use from book five to 17 getting two or three of these books, investing in that, will give you everything you need, more than you need, to get you uh, well prepared for the IELTS exam. I would stay away from books one to four because they have question types that are a little different and don't exist on the uh, IELTS exam anymore. But if you stay with books five and beyond, uh, they will prepare you with the specific question types and strategies that you need to know for the IELTS exam. And these are the most reliable resources for your preparation. You know, there's so many different resources and information that you can find about the IELTS exam on the internet. But unfortunately, 90% of them are, are not useful. They're not reliable. They won't help you get the score you need. So make sure you seek out reliable resources, and the, the main one to start with is Cambridge. The other two official organizations that are involved with IELTS are British Council and IDP. And both British Council and IDP provide practice tests on their websites. And again, these are as similar to what I mentioned about Cambridge. They are official questions. They've been used on official IELTS exam, and you can't go wrong with using anything you find from British Council or IDP. Uh, one more resource that I do want to mention is my YouTube channel. I'm certified and trained with British Council, and everything I use in the lessons I teach on my YouTube channel in the videos all comes from official resources, either Cambridge, British Council, or IDP. The information that I provide is reliable, and I would encourage you again to subscribe to my channel. I promise you that the resources are reliable, and in each of the videos, you'll find links to uh, Cambridge, British Council, and IDP practice tests. One thing to note about the IELTS exam is if you have special requirements. This may be uh, uh, something that you need special help with. It could be uh, something to do with your speech, an impediment to your speech. It could be a mobility uh, issue uh, and having access to, uh, to different test centers. When you're booking your exam, if you have something that you feel you will need uh, special requirements for, it's very important that you uh, state this before you book your test and as you're booking your test. There are uh, 
adjustments that can be made depending on any special requirements you may have. And uh, for example, if you have a problem with a speech impediment or a speech disability, in some cases, instead of a 15 minute speaking test, you could have a 30 minute speaking test where you're given more time to answer. If you have another issue, a mobility issue or a, a, a disability that needs special requirements, uh, 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 these, there are concessions that are made for these situations. So make sure that you state these ahead of time. You may need a doctor's note for some, so you'll need time to do that. But as you're booking your test, uh, don't be discouraged. If you have special requirements, don't hesitate to make them known so that they won't be an issue on test day and you can get the support and help that you need if it's required. So that's very important to know if you need um, any help in specific ways when it comes to test day. So when should you book your test? The simple answer is book your test when you know that you're fully prepared. Over 50% of test takers don't get the score they need the first time they take the test. And it's a simple matter of not being prepared. Maybe their English is not at the high enough level that it needs to be, and they haven't taken the time to improve their English language ability. Or maybe they haven't discovered and practiced every section and question type on the IELTS exam. And what I encourage you to do right at the beginning is to do a complete test, discover what you really need to improve and work on that. And I've given you resources. You can begin your preparation at home, on your own and independently, and use the resources that are available. And focus on your weaknesses and analyze your weaknesses. If you discover, there's basically two types of errors that you make when it comes to the IELTS exam. There are English mistakes, English language mistakes, and this is just simply because your English language ability isn't high enough. If this is the case, Stop your IELTS preparation and focus on improving your English until you get it to that high intermediate and advanced level. Once you know that it's at the level you need it to be, then focus on the IELTS strategy and work on the IELTS questions and get to know every detail about every strategy and technique for every question. And then Start working on your weaknesses because working on your weaknesses is where you'll improve the fastest. And then eventually you're going to reach your limit of what you can do and improve on your own. And this is the time to ask an expert to step in, maybe to evaluate your writing or to give you a mock speaking test. Someone who is trained in helping you uh, with the IELTS exam. Do as much as you can. Invest your time first in as much preparation as you can do. And then if necessary, once you've reached the limit of what you can do on your own, then ask an expert to step in. But don't ask an expert too early either. Don't spend hundreds of dollars on, on dozens of lessons if you haven't uh, discover what you can accomplish on your own first. And I recommend that as someone who makes a living as, a, as an expert IELTS teacher. Don't ask an expert before you need one. Don't invest too much time and money uh, before you need to in this area. Do as much as you can. And there are some very good, reliable resources, as I've mentioned, I'm here to help you with my YouTube channel. Uh, don't hesitate if you watch any videos to ask your questions and I'll answer them as best I can. There are three different types of tests that you might want to be aware of. And uh, we've talked about IDP and British Council. These are the official uh, places to book your test. You may come across one that's called UKV1. 
This is unique to the UK. It does have some extra requirements and it does cost a little more to take the test. But if you're taking the IELTS academic or general, that should be suitable for most countries, English speaking countries. But again, right from the beginning, make sure if this is required, it will take some extra uh, resources uh, to book your test for this one. There is one that uh, became popular during the pandemic, IELTS Online, which is uh, an IELTS exam that you can take at home and you would do your speaking test on Zoom. But I want to warn you that this may not be available any longer now that the pandemic has uh, seems to be coming to an end. But also to realize that the IELTS online exam, if it is still available to you, you need to be aware that some institutions and some organizations don't accept it because it's not as secure and reliable as going to the test center. And some, some universities and organizations uh, will require that you go to the test center and not do your IELTS test online. And uh, even more strict than universities and professional organizations is immigration. If you are looking to get a visa for an English speaking country or to immigrate or to do permanent residence, there's a very good chance that the IELTS online won't be accepted. So make sure you are well aware of this before you get started. And there's also one called IELTS Life Skills. And I just want to tell you that this is a completely different test. It's not useful for anything that we've talked about. It has a completely different strategy, a completely different setup. It's a different test altogether and will not accomplish what you want to accomplish if you need the general or academic IELTS exam. I do want to mention one very good resource that I've created that can help you right from the beginning of your preparation. It's my free IELTS preparation checklist. It's designed for people who are just beginning and just getting started in their preparation. And it will take you through the steps you need to know, everything you need to know as you begin your preparation for the IELTS exam. The link is in the comments. Don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. My email address is also in the link if you want to reach out and ask me any questions or look for more information. And I've made it my mission to help people just like you get the score you need on the IELTS exam. So all the best on your journey.